Okay, thank you for having me. And actually, it is uh, uh, great to be here. And after Christina's presentation, I think my my information here will actually build on what Christina is mentioning here about the, the development and the science of the batteries and the artificial intelligence. Uh, but overall, it's my pleasure to be here. So thank you for having me. And my name is Sami Haikala. I'm our head of development in Northvolt Westeros. I lead our R&D team responsible for the uh, material and product and the process and equipment development for the battery cell applications. And uh, I will shortly introduce Northvolt. I will briefly talk about our our R&D campus located in Westeros and a uh, little bit give you uh, thoughts about our main focus on uh, advanced material development. I don't go to the details like Christina did, but I give you more information about the direction where we are heading. But, but first, a uh, few words about Northvolt. So Northvolt uh, is a battery company founded in 2016 with a mission to build the greenest battery in the world. And since then, we have aimed to become the Europe's largest and the biggest leading supplier on the sustainable, high-quality battery cells. As of today, in this battery industry, there is no other company who holds such a high, ambitious targets for the sustainability as we do. We started in uh, 2016, but actually the company started to accelerate in around 2018. Uh, I personally joined the company uh, roughly three years ago. At that time, we had uh, 500 people in the company. Today, we are more than 4,500. So it has been a crazy times for us to grow, grow such a tremendous phase. Um, of course, the growth is enabled by our uh, investors, our partners, and the customers. As you see, we are well funded uh, towards mass production. We have today built fully functional world-leading R&D campus to Westeros, and we are on our way to ship the cells from our mass production location in Shell Left here today. The recruitment phase has been tremendous, and uh, the purpose, uh, what we have had in our mind, is that we want to hire the best people, best talents in the world. We have been attracting uh, uh, different nationalities from all over the world, in a company, we have 125 different nationalities working today. I lead the campus in Westeros, which has 1,000 people, a bit more than 1,000. And in Westeros alone, we have 92 different nationalities. It just tells that we have wanted to bring the best experts from the industry and also recruit the talents from the universities in Sweden, but also abroad to bring the best competencies to Sweden here to accelerate our uh, transition to the electro, uh, electromobility. The products that we develop, they are mainly, mainly designed for uh, automotive applications. Uh, we provide the sales to our customers in, in all levels of automotive industry. So it's a cars, light commercial vehicles, buses and trucks. You have seen some announcements with the uh, Scania and Volkswagen previously on the media. We also provide the cells for energy storage systems. Uh, these are mainly the backup power solutions for the utility, grid, and, uh, and the solar power. In the company, we have our battery system team, which is uh, responsible to develop industrial applications. So for uh, high-duty vehicles, uh, suitable for mining and uh, uh, material handling and uh, also in the avi aviation segment. The most of the cells we do, they are for the automotive application, but as we do power cells, some of the cells are fit also for the portable device segment, uh, especially for the power tools and, uh, and other home health appli uh, appliances. In a battery industry, uh, the value chain basically starts from the mining, then the metal chemicals, active material production, electrode manufacturing, cell assembly, then building the modules and packs from the cells, and then finally closing the loop by recycling. 
we want to drive our sustainability promise to build the greenest battery in the world, and it means that we need to tackle the vertical integration. We as a company, we, we don't go to mines, we don't own the mines as such, but we, we work with the meta chemical, mainly the refineries, we have some joint ventures, but the rest of the value chain we do have in-house. In and uh, commonly, battery industry, tra traditional battery industry only builds the cells. So they have the electrode manufacturing and they have the cell assembly in-house. Some of the some companies may also use the cells and build the modules and packs. This is rather a traditional approach in the battery industry. While we want to di disrupt the industry and uh, have a, a more deepened vertical integration compared to our competitors. So as such, we have uh, uh, built our active material development team, but also the active material cathode production in-house. We do the, all the tra traditional production processes from electrode manufacturing to cell assembly. System team do, does the modules and packs, and then we have our recycling unit called uh, Revolt, where we, where the purpose is that Revolt is collecting, of course, all, all our scrap material, but then also the field returns in the, from the field, uh, not only ours, but uh, for all battery sources. These deep vertical integrations enables us to control the supply chain. The supply chain is key in the battery industry to have the control on the product, traceability, and also drive the sustainability targets forward. And of course, in a big picture, it also enables structural cost benefits for us as a company and being able to compete with the Asian players against the Asian players. <coughs> All these vertically integrated solutions, we innovate in Westeros. We have a world-class R&D built in Westeros and uh, it, it consists all the functions in a pilot scale. So we have a material production, we have a material labs, we have a cell labs, we have a cell production, we have all the validation capabilities built in, in the West Westeros. And the world-class team that I mentioned to you about that is being recruited all over the world to drive and accelerate the change in the industry to drive the sustainability forward is all located in Westeros. Christina mentioned briefly about the the AI and the, and the sensing technologies, and, and it is also super important for us, a little bit from the different angle perspective, but for us it's a key to disrupt the industry, the traditional battery industry, by being the data-driven, developing a new sensing methods to improve our quality controls, uh, shorten the development times through these sensing and uh, artificial intelligence technologies that we are developing in-house, but also with our partners in, in universities and, and, and with other startups. The Westeros campus, we call it factory zero. So everything is in a pilot scale. So it serves as, us as an industrialization product and process development platform. And it holds all the R&D capabilities from, from early advanced material development, looking beyond today's technologies, it holds the cell development groups that are delivering the solutions for our customers today. And it has all the operative uh, functions in a pilot scale. Our advanced material team, the team that is looking beyond today's technologies, is, is mainly focusing on two categories. Refining the existing battery mat materials. Today, our company is mainly, use, uh, mainly focused on the NMC technologies. So, the team is focused how to further develop the performance of the current technology, but also then uh, research the new battery chemistries that may disrupt the industry going forward. In batteries, the key components are cathode, anode, and electrolyte, as Christina also mentioned here. And our research is, is mainly around these three components in-house and working closely with the partners and other universities. The advanced team, by, by refining the chemistries, we mean that the advanced team is focused on exploring the uh, alternative compositions, 
or morphologies of the today's NMC nickel, manganese, cobalt uh, material. But they want to also go beyond. How do, how do we improve the cell performance uh, in a cycle life context, rate capability, giving you faster charging times, uh, or having the initial performance pumped up with the higher energy density? There the focus is on anode materials, especially silicon-based materials and uh, alternative graphite, uh, graphite compositions that can represent the pathways to improve the performance. Cycle life, great capability, so that your, charge, your car is charged less than 20 minutes. Going beyond today's chemistries, uh, the team is highly focused uh, on our different chemistries that can offer improvements again on a performance in the long term and also finding a solutions that can uh, provide the solution for the lower cost markets. Beyond the silicon material on an anode, the team is working on the lithium metal as an anode material. And, uh, and on the lower cost segment, more affordable markets, we are looking at alternative chemistries that can further uh, lower the cost, be more, more sustainable, and the work is highly focused on also on the sodium ion technologies in our companies. So these are the key, key, uh, key areas that our advanced material team is focused without going on super details. Uh, but this is the research topics that our team is mainly driving forward. And, and all the development, like mentioned, happens in, uh, in Westeros. This is an image of our campus in uh, as it is today. So uh, we believe that we have built something super unique in this industry and it is located in Sweden. It is the uh, world's most equipped R&D center and building the full ecosystem for the battery development under one roof. We started the operations there in 2019 and today we have a bit more than 1,000 people. Uh, when I joined like three years ago we had bit more than uh, 100 people in this campus, maybe 150, so it has been a crazy, crazy times for the company in a positive way, but we have been able to do a tremendous progress in our, our development and growth. And, uh, and the campus itself, what we have built, built there today, is that we have a full cell size manufacturing lines available for the prismatic cells and the cylindrical cells. These, sample, these lines are not in mass production scale, but they are in a scale that we can deliver rather significant quantities to our customers and also for our initial validation. We also have our cathode material production on, under the same campus. This is a full scale cathode uh, active material production plant that is connected to our cathode material lab. These two processes, the active material and the cell production side, are scale-up functions towards our mass production. So all the learnings we do in Westeros, we take to our mass production site. And our first mass production site is in Shell Leftio, and then uh, followed by uh, other sites in the, in the world. We also have an R&D production, we call it R&D Lab, where we do everything in a pilot scale and provide the data from coin cells to pouch cells to first full cells and on the material level. So it works as an as a, as a initial incubation lab for our, our development. In the campus, we have our recycling plant. We call it Revolt. This is uh, our platform for the research and the development of battery recycling technologies. So all the, all the operative sites are in, in there for, in a pilot scale. But to validate the materials and the cells, we have also built full in-house capabilities to do the material screening, material analysis, but also the cell level validation. So, and the performance and life lab is full equipped, equipped to validate the products, capacities, and then longevity of the cells. SCM refers to safety and environmental lab, which is fully functional and and is capable to meet and perform all the safety testing uh, against the customer requirements, but also against the international standards. 
Then we have recently opened our lab house, new office, new visitor center, which is living our sustainable values, and it is the biggest wooden office building in the Nordics. So uh, this is serving, of course, our people, but this is a hub for the visitors and uh, our partners from the universities, from uh, suppliers uh, and, and the customers to visit us and uh, work together with us. And uh, that being said, this is a brief introduction where we as a company are in our R&D campus. And uh, I hope to see some of you come in to collaborate with us in Westeros and, and learn more what we are doing today and how we can work together. Thank you. Thank you, Sami. And uh, also that gives uh, plenty of time for questions, so please don't be shy. Christina. There was a paper in Nature early this spring describing the worry for the gap, uh, what we do at universities compared to what you do in industry and how you can make an electrode and, and in many of these companies. When you employ people, you employed a lot of people very rapidly, have you seen sort of, can you say what's worrying from your side that we don't give our PhD students and master students that you would need to be more efficient as an industry. Do yeah. you see a gap? Yes, we see a gap. And what is the gap? <laughs> and, um, if, we, if we look then, we, d we have done a lot of recruitment as you see from the numbers. It's, uh, it's uh, <laughs> crazy in some extent. But uh, where we have been looking the people of course, we wanted to have an experienced people who have been working on our industry to accelerate our development. But we have wanted to recruit also a lot of people from the universities. And we have recruited people from Commerce, we have recruited people from KTH and Uppsala also. But in, in Sweden, it has been still quite limited that the people who would have had the right background on the material science or understanding the battery applications compared what the, also the universities around the world are offering. So I think there is some more collaboration oppor opportunities towards industry telling what are the needs today and where do we see the needs going in the future. Obviously this industry is going, growing so fast that it will need a lot of people. People who start their studies today will have an employment when they graduate also. The industry is growing so much. So probably there needs to be more dialogue in this, in this sense. And I think our CEO has been also quite, quite active and vocal on this. So. He sure has, uh, I think both to me and Christina, yes, absolutely pushing that. Um, more questions? Yes, up there. Thanks a lot, it's really inspiring. You mentioned you take lunges that you start to move in sodium in your battery and I presume you're moving also on solid-state battery. This is the question. <laughs> so, of course, we do research uh, together in-house and together with the universities for basically all, for the, all the chemistries. For us, normally solid-state, for example, it, it is connected to lithium metal uh, development in many cases. Our lithium metal, our approach is more on a liquid type of electrolyte, but we, we also follow the solid-state approach. For the sodium, yes, we are, we are focused to develop that uh, in-house and with our partners. Whether, whether, when, and how do we do it, we don't know it well today, but it's on the research phase at the moment. Let's see, Fabrice. Thanks a lot for the talk. Um, I have a very general question. I guess that you are focused on 2NMC, uh, cathode, and so on. So what do you think about uh, these, uh, those, uh, I would say the LFP, obviously, which mm -hmm. is coming back in force in China, and the LMFP, and all this activity that we uh, hear about uh, those uh, lower energy density cathode, but with uh, other uh, uh, advantages, I would say. Yeah. Uh, so 
Correct. So we are mainly focused on NMC. So today uh, we, are high, we are focused on a high-end segment more. So that's, that's driving us in our NMC today. We have been looking at LFP, LMFP also. Uh, how, if we look where we are today, how is the lower cost segment uh, developing? There will be a development and probably some, some extent competition between uh, LFP and sodium. We believe that for us, we probably are better to take a more focus on the sodium than lithium uh, LFP as, as today. But it is more reflecting where we are today as a company. And also with the LFP, the, the sources are heavily China dependent and we really want to drive the, the localization. So that's also, uh, also one, one topic to consider there. I think that uh, I, I now I just assume that Sami would be prepared to answer questions also after the break, but I guess he will. Yeah. Um, so uh, with that, I think we thank Sami once more. Super interesting. Thank you.